So have you always looked at the Anthurium Vici or the King Anthurium and just gone, is it worth it? Are those ruffles, those abs in front of the leaves really all that is cracked up to be? And is this plant easy? Stick with me and I'll share my experiences with the Anthurium Vici over the years. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is obviously going to be a continuation of the plant review series, and it will be an update review actually. And it will be an update review and I'll have to pick it up. It's on the trolley, you might be able to see the newest leaf here, but you probably can't see the rest of the plant. So this is gonna be me going up and down for the entirety of this video, because it is growing in the most unique way. So I'll bring it in so you can actually see the plant I'm talking about. I'll bring you in for a bit of a close up on the newest leaf. And you can see some of the older leaves. And as you might be able to tell, they are quite sizable at this stage. So you can see that is my head next to the most recent leaf before the one that's emerging now. But let me put this down and let's talk through some ground rules. So if you're one of my regulars and are coming back for more, welcome back, it's nice to have you, as always. You know what to do if you want to skip to your favorite chapter. And for the new people joining for the first time, welcome. It's nice to have you here to this light insanity that is this plant review series. And the ground rules are predominantly for the newbies, the kind of people that have been here before, they know all this. But essentially it's just to say that there is no way that I can make this review unbiased. It is my biased opinion about my specific plant growing in my specific conditions. And my specific conditions are I'm growing in a conservatory in the UK. And whatever that might mean in terms of heat, humidity, cold, all of the above. It's getting warm at the moment and it's currently not even nine o'clock in the morning. And I think this room is already at about 30 degrees Celsius. So I might be sweltering and if I am, I do apologize. There's also fans going and I cannot do anything to stop that because you will see me melt in front of you in terms of the video. But without further ado, let's dive into the first topic. So I will try to hold this for as much of the video as I can, because on and heavy, basically. So background on this. I've had it for quite a few years, as with all my videos. I don't remember how many years. The video title will have how long I've had it. I've also done another review on this Anthurium Vici, and I will link it at the top there. But yeah, essentially, the way that I got this is, if I'm not mistaken, I think this was an eBay purchase. I don't think this was anything particularly exciting, as in like, discovery story and all these things. And it was, oh no, 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 no. I take all of that back. I did have a VTI that I got from eBay, if I'm not mistaken. No. We're starting off gloriously today. It's a bit too early on a Sunday morning and it's too hot so my brain is frying. No, I've got two VTIs and I will show you the other one, which ironically enough is older than this one. So let me put this down really quickly. Let me show you the other one. So just so we can all laugh, this, is my other VTI, and this VTI, I think, is almost a year older than, maybe not a year, a few months older than, <laughs> than the one that you've just seen. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, we're probably encroaching on three to four years for both of these plants, like, ridiculous. This is in Semi-Hydro, this is in the coarse Aroid mix from the guys at Soil Ninja, but let me put this down and pick up the Big Mama Dama Beast. Before I do that, I will put a picture here, hopefully I've got one, of when I first got that one. And also to say that that one I purchased from a relatively big plant seller in the UK. They used to sell on Instagram and they collaborated with a YouTuber and they were selling plants and it was, I think this was pandemic, so it might be less years than I was talking about. Um, 
and it came to me complete with root rot because I'm assuming there wasn't much rehab that happened there. The customer service was bad or non-existent. I have not since purchased from either of those um, individuals. I'm pretty sure the YouTuber is now no longer selling things. I'm not even sure if they are still on YouTube or if it's just on Instagram at the moment, but uh, nothing, no shade on the specific YouTuber because I think they were just doing things to survive during the pandemic, which fair dues. But uh, yeah, that one has always struggled. At the same time, however, and let me pick up the big one, I got this plant, and I will also put a picture here of when I first got this, as a tiny bibby like little seedling from Carl at Turner Tropical. And I know a lot of people around then, they were all looking for the VTI. A lot of us got the seedlings. Uh, I don't know whether or not a lot of people had success with them. This is when I was still trialing out things like my kind of growing some of these seedlings on a heat mat. I think it helped it. Pretty much didn't do anything for anything else. And actually on that point, I might try it with some of my other Anthurium. I might, uh, I've got some of my own seedlings, so I might try it with that one basically, because I've got loads of the same seedling basically. But with this, yeah, <laughs> it has got larger. Can you believe that, let me see if I can pick both of them up without dropping everything that this plant is older than this plant. And this had leaves that were bigger than what it has now. So theoretically, that one should have been a much more established VCI than this one. So there is something to be said there. But that was, that was the excitement of trying to get these plants into my care. This was obviously a kind of backup situation or kind of a plant in case that first one died off. It didn't specifically, but I mean, <laughs> can we just, and I mean, some of this is bleached out because it is in very, very bright light at the moment, but the ruffles for days, and there's a bit of cosmetic damage there because there's a split, and let me, ooh, whilst I try not to drop the entire thing down, <laughs> I mean, I mean, but yeah, background on this was an adventurous time on trying to get this plant into my care, but yeah, doing okay. So coming into a speed of growth for this one, and I will say that out of a lot of my anthuriums, when it's young, when it was younger, rather than now when it's bringing out massive leaves, it's probably one of my fastest anthuriums, I have to say that. And it was my fastest anthurium. I don't know if it still is my fastest anthurium, but yeah, it is definitely one that doesn't kind of wait around to bring out new leaves. And if I was to benchmark this against the golden pothos in my care, say for instance, the golden pothos in the summer would be bringing out two to three leaves in a month, this might bring out a new leaf in the month, which is not bad for an anthurium, especially of this size. And I'm talking about it now. I'm talking about these types of leaves because this came out a couple of days ago and it's already sizing up. So I don't want to handle it too much. Although I will say in relation to a lot of other anthuriums, this anthurium's leaves don't tend to be so overly sensitive, at least in my experience, when they are emerging. So there is that to be said. Some other anthuriums, when they've got emerging leaves, you can look at them or breathe at them in the wrong way and they'll get ripped or they'll get kind of dismembered or kind of like a really weird kind of knock on them or something like that. So <laughs> this one's not like that. But yeah, I would say this is relatively fast. I'd be curious to see have anybody else had the same experience. Now, coming into ease of propagation, and I can only judge it on this specific plant, as in when it came to me as a seedling, because I have not propagated this. If you have propagated a VTI through cutting or anything like that, do let us know down below. I've also, I'm trying to think now if I've ever had an inflorescence. I had my first inflorescence on this this year. I have since changed phone. I did take a picture of it. If I find it and it didn't get lost within the 
moving of phones around, I will also add that here. And it was a much smaller inflorescence than I was expecting. It was a little fat stubby one. I don't know if it was because it was his first inflorescence and that's not normal, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, but I've not ever seed propagated it as in got pollen and then pollinated the, the actual inflorescence. But, and I also haven't ever done a cutting. But from a seedling, when I got this, because it was a relatively young seedling when we got it, I mean, it wasn't particularly big at all. Was it easy after that point? In my experience, yes. And I will heavily caveat that to say that that wasn't everybody's experience, I think. Um, Carl did great from Tony Tropical to get us the seedling. I think at that point, I don't know. I don't know if it's a particularly difficult plant or if it's because a lot of us at that point were only just really getting into some of these anthuriums and we didn't really know what to do with seedlings or we hadn't found our kind of groove yet when it came to kind of dealing with anthurium seedlings. Maybe that's why some of them struggled a bit, basically. But my one, I have to say, it it just keeps doing its thing. It, it isn't a particularly difficult anthurium for me. And it wasn't during that kind of growth and propagation stage. Yes, it took a while to get roots, but it constantly brought out new leaves. I mean, it does also lose leaves, especially when it gets this big. But the fact that I've got one, two, three, four, five leaves on it at the moment, it's not bad. So coming into availability for this one, and it's an interesting one because the VCI, when I was getting it, the first time around, both plants, it really wasn't easy to find, especially not in the UK. I think it might have been a bit more available in the US, but in my kind of part of the world, and I would imagine it would have been the same for Europe, although I do think this came from maybe a private seller who had VCI seedlings, and that's how maybe Carl at Turner Tropical got it. I'm not entirely sure. For instance, the other seller that I was getting the small one from, that came from either the Far East or Central America. I'm not entirely sure, basically. So it wasn't that easy to find. Is it easy to find now? Easy, easy, no. Can you find it crop up a bit more regularly? Yes, from what I've seen. So this wasn't, I'm trying to think how much I paid for it. I don't know. I'll see if I can go through emails and find the receipt for the seedling and add it onto the video. I might not be able to, so apologies in advance. Same thing goes for the other one as well that kind of rotted a bit. I think the one that I got from the seller, or the two sellers, I think that was very, very low treble digits. And I think this, because it was a seedling, was kind of mid double digits. Have those prices gone down now? Yes. And I think they've gone down now depending on the size of the plant. Because obviously if you're looking at my one, and I would assume at some point when they get large enough, they do start growing in weird ways. These would be, I wouldn't even know where to start packaging this basically. And obviously a plant this size would probably cost a lot more than a seedling or a, a much younger plant, which I understand. I also understand why they send slightly younger plants because they're probably easier to send. But other than that, I think there's interest for this plant. I think there's a lot more interest for the plant behind me, which is the Warocrianum, so the Queen Anthurium. This is obviously the Anthurium vicii, otherwise sometimes called the King Anthurium. And obviously now I've got the, <laughs> I've got the couple, I've got the matching set basically. Um, but yeah, this one I don't think was ever, and it's a shame because I don't think this one was ever as popular as the Queen Anthurium. And I, I do think that this one should be as popular as that because ironically enough, this is a lot less temperamental than the Queen Anthurium. So coming into pests for this one, I don't know for the eagle-eyed if you can see this, I have got the usual predatory insect satchels on my actual plant. And let's talk a bit about pests that I've experienced on this. So predominantly I will say, actually no, we've had, there's been a variety on this plant. So white fly was something that happened, but did it cause it much distress? No. Is there white flies on this at the moment? Yes, it's that time of the year, yay. 
then spider mites, yes. Does it cause an awful lot of damage? No. Mealy bugs, yes. Not as many as I would normally find in here. Does it cause a lot of damage? No. Touchwood, I don't think I've had Thrix on this just yet. However, I will say this new satchel is wonderful. And I knew a friend that did it last year, and this is the Anso Mite Plus, and I got this from Dragonfly in the UK, and which I get most of my predatory insects from there. I don't know different ones. There might be different ones around Europe or around the world. I know the ones here, basically. And those are interesting, because normally I would get satchels of predatory insects that are specific to that specific pests. That one was an interesting one, because it will deal with spider mites, it will deal with white fly. These are all kind of early stages, so it can't deal with spider mites when it's webbing. It can only deal with um, the larval stage of a white fly and the larval stage of thrips. So, and it's great because it's little mites and they are much faster and you can definitely see the difference between them and a spider mite if that's what you're wondering or kind of were curious about. But so far, that's really cool. They are so aggressive. It is wonderful. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, the one thing that I will say about this plant is, can it get some pests? Yes. Can it get a variety of pests? Yes. Do they set it back as long as you catch it early enough? Not in the slightest, I'd say. And even when it does get pests, the damage that's left isn't that extensive. And it is predominantly because these leaves are so leathery and tough. It is spectacular. Obviously, with the ruffles that you'll get on some of these leaves, they can be quite deep. So with things like spider mites, <laughs> you might have to take it, well, I do, take it outside, put it under a hose, and then make sure that I've kind of got into all the nooks and crannies to make sure that those spider mites have washed off, basically. Don't do that if you've just put predatory insects on, because you're washing away the predatory insects that you paid a lot of money for. So, But generally speaking, not that bad when it comes to pests, I will say. Now, coming into accessories and care with this one, and this is interesting because you might notice of this, I don't know whether or not you can notice, but it is in the coarse semi-hydro mix from the lovely people at Soil Ninja. And I do have a sphagnum moss collar on it, and I'll bring it in so you might be able to see. There you go. It's got some spectacular aerial roots, which I don't know whether or not that's going to show up, and I don't particularly want to, like, maybe you might be able to see what my finger is. It's never really particularly, I mean, it has a reservoir. We're coming into the time of the year now where I will fill its reservoir, but during the winter, I will just water it as normal and empty the reservoir. So it's just got the moisture that's in the semi-hydro mix. And I've kind of got to that stage with most of my Ethereums and they do really, really well. Now, as it's starting to get warmer, I will do the same thing, but I will leave the water in the water reservoir. And generally speaking, with most of my Ethereums at the moment, it depends where they are in my space. They might get watered once every five days or once every seven days, basically. So uh, interestingly, the new Anthuriums, which are much larger from Equigenera, pretty much went straight onto a four-day cycle in my care, basically. So, but I do have very bright conditions, basically, in here. So that's one thing. When does it get fertilized? Weekly, weekly. So weak amount of fertilizer every week, basically, or every watering, even in the winter. And I did my other video about my top light game changers, and I will link it at the top as well. And that's it. I don't have an awful lot to say about this because it's such an easygoing plant. It isn't one that generally gives me a lot of hassle. There's no janky support stick. Would this maybe benefit from a moss pole? Possibly, just to give it a bit more stability. Would it start growing upwards? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I've seen that many people with this on a moss pole, potentially. Would it make it grow any faster? I don't think so. Would it make the leaves size up any faster? I don't think so. I mean, these are sizable, basically. And it'd be interesting for the people to go and see the previous video that I would have linked earlier on in the video um, to see the size difference in terms of the leaves between a year ago and now, because it is, I think, quite large, basically, so which is kind of cool. And um, yeah, I think that's it on accessories and care. It's relatively straightforward. Right, I had to put it down because a cramps, and I 
very proud of myself for holding that for nearly 20 minutes. It's great. But let's come into my final thoughts on this. And I don't think they would have drastically changed from the previous video. So I'll do the question that I usually do first is knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant, would I purchase it? Completely 100% eyes blind, I would purchase this. The only thing I will say is I would probably get it larger than just a seedling. So my top tip to you, if you're thinking about buying it and budget and things like that is something that you are concerned about. So going for a seedling will obviously be a lot cheaper rather than a slightly more mature plant, probably not to the same level as mine is here basically. And I will bring my trusty little trolley here so you might still be able to see the new leaf there. But yeah, I would say, if you don't have an awful lot of money to spend on this, but you are slightly impatient with me and are not willing to wait for it to start sizing up slowly, I would say save a bit of money, put it aside and do it in a few months time when you can build up a bit more of a little budget there and then buy it as a slightly larger plant. You will hopefully thank me for that because it does grow a bit more steadily, a bit more faster. I think you can get these plants quite easily from Equigenera, I'm not mistaken. I've never seen it on Equigenera because I don't look for it because I've already got it. But, uh, and I don't think they're massively expensive on companies like Equigenera, basically. And I would imagine this would ship spectacularly. I say this, I've not had this shipped to me from abroad. So if you have, let us know down below what your experiences have been. But yeah, overall, 100% I would really get this. Am I a bit annoyed that the other one is still as small as it is? And I'll bring that one up because that's a lot easier to put, pick up. Yes. Have I come to kind of love it a bit in its little kind of delayed growth? Yeah. I mean, it's always been like that and it's always usually ever really had two leaves on it. Meh. It is what it is. And maybe one day in a few decades time, it might get to the size of this one is now, so it's fine. I've got the, the bigger one, so I don't mind quite as much, basically. But coming into the scoring. So the scoring with this one, my usual scoring between zero and one being the worst and 10 being the best, where would I score this? And I will score it based on my experiences with this plant as it is now. My previous video, I think, would a bit more of an overall, but I think I'll change it. I'll see if I can find the old score and put it at the top there as well. But this is probably a nine or a 10 for me. That gives you an idea. Very much love this plant, basically. And, and I mean, <laughs> it's interesting because a lot of the plants that I do end up loving, and it's not a thing that I ever really look for in a plant, are these kind of roughly leaved plants. And it's not a thing that I ever look for in a plant, but it comes out that a lot of these plants with these ruffles on them, and maybe it's a thing that's a kind of evolutionary thing, I don't know, I tend to find are much, much hardier and much less demanding. They're not quite as kind of prima donna-esque. So there is that as well. Out of a lot of my anthuriums, I love this, I think, the most. It's still kind of very near and dear to my heart. And again, as I said, okay, it doesn't have the kind of velvety leaves that you'll get from the queen anthurium. It does have that pendant shaped leaf, so those long, long leaves. It is a lot more leathery, but actually that works really well. So if you're a person who kind of might easily get stressed out on kind of pests or you're worried about waterings, this, I didn't mention that actually, I'll mention it now. This plant in terms of being an anthurium, for me, I have found it the most forgiving when it comes to watering. So if I've overwatered it and I've got a tiny bit of root rot, as long as I catch it and remove it, it bounces back in no time. Same thing goes with underwatering. This is one that you can kind of quite easily see. It's a bit more expressive than some of the other anthuriums. Obviously, you don't want to let it dry out for far too long, but it will also go for a lot longer, I find if it is a bit dry. It's very similar to something like my Vitarifolium here, where the actual roots are very, very, very chunky. Very similar to something like um, Monstera Deliciosa. They are very thick roots. So you can imagine that it can go for a bit longer of being dry. Do I suggest you have it bone dry for a long period of time? Probably not, but it's still an anthurium. But yeah, for me, one of my top, top plants, basically. 
But I'd be curious to know, do you have this plant? Is this a plant that you're thinking about getting? Share your experiences down below as always in the comments and let's discuss. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.